Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Zheng Zhao campaign. This is episode 19. We pick things up from turn 94 in the harvest season of 201. So last episode, uh, we didn't do very much in terms of fighting. We got out of a big fight because the AI, you know, didn't cooperate with us. Ma Teng went to go fight Gongdu's army. They didn't die, he just ambushed himself so we didn't see him. But he's kind of screwed now, surrounded by us. And Ma Teng ran. I guess this is his capital, so that means that's his last land. So the uh, AI basically handed the emperor to Ma Teng, who has Wu Du. He literally had Wu Du and Ba Xi, two counties or two commanders, and he was the emperor. And you know, Han Sui looks like he just owns about Wu Wei because the Liang rebels actually own most of this. But the color change here is interesting. So. It might be either a yellow turban force here, because it's not red, or maybe just empty land, who knows. Um, but we have more important things, because once we took their emperor seat, just the small city of Wudu over here, we got the imperial court, which is very interesting, because I was not expecting this. I thought we can keep our original structure. This changes a lot of things. Uh, for one thing, I was very wrong about the reform guide. You don't eventually need to go for those three reforms that gives you the general of the people, general of the land, and general of the heaven. Because you just have this, and now you have seven characters like most factions to enjoy faction-wide bonuses. We also need to utilize these generals correctly. So for air, um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to pick our only other unique model general, and he has pretty good bonuses. We're going to pick He Yi. And the version of Huiyi you're going to pick is going to be the one with the armor. Not because the armor has extra bonuses, but mainly because he has better traits. They got different traits. So this is our version of Huiyi. If we take a look at his traits, he has Honest, so Corruption Reduction. He has Satisfaction from Disciplinarian, and there's another one, Kind, also gives Satisfaction. And there's Public Order from Philanthropy. Versus this, this version, the one without armor. He's, you know, he's also kind, which is nice, but no honest. The honest is the big deal. We're looking for, you know, corruption reduction. So, Hui comes in here, becomes our heir, and we get one extra army. That's from his reach skill, uh, 12 satisfactions from a mixture of his uh, skills and abilities, and also his authority stat. Uh, two public order we saw from philanthropy, and minus five corruption is what we're really looking for here. So confirm that they get along perfectly and I actually spent some time in between episode looking through all the characters to see who's suitable for these roles consider that they will give their faction wide bonus and the sad news is we don't have a lot of great people um, these roles will have some um, you know passive ability like this one gives extra food regardless of who you sent there so since we have a limited number of people we're gonna focus on the ones that provide the most significant boost for us so the one that's going to benefit us the most is actually Grant Excellency of the Works because you get 15% industry income and Yellow Turbans have really really high base industry income, 910 per commander if you max out without any counties. So this is actually the best boost you can get. And as you can see from the faction wide bonuses for Bu Si, one of his biggest draws is the minus 10% to corruption. Uh, so he's a visor. A visor is actually mainly a healer. Uh, ability, but because he's one of the starting generals in our group, so he actually has a very unique background that's on a scholar, but it should be only on healers as a generic. So he's technically not generic. And then he has other abilities from his traits that are helpful. So we're gonna put him in here. Also, he has flexibility, so we get the nice 25% redeployment cost. We're gonna get this to 100% very easily. So let's put him here. And then the second best is probably Grand Tutor. Grand Tutor has some experience and trade bonuses, I believe. And the other character we're looking at is possibly um, Liu Gang. Liu Gang is pretty good for this. Where is he? There he is. So Liu Gang here is a potter. So that's 10% to industry. Once again, we said industry is very good. And also he has stored. So that's 5% to all sources. And this doesn't count because he's not going to become a uh, administrator. And over here, populist doesn't do much. But overall, I feel like he's a pretty fair balance just from Potter itself, and he has positive traits. A lot of my characters, 
that have like Potter or Visor tend to have bad traits and he just doesn't have bad traits so that's good enough for me we get some extra boost to income uh, trade influence character experience so more levels means more skills more skills means more stacking for yellow turbans and then we have a few other that are decent enough uh, for example she could be a good uh, leadership role if we take a look at her stats minus two turns for construction from builder and she also has some public order bonus and just a lot of stats from a lot of traits satisfaction no honest but as you can see a lot of green traits and there's only six you can have up to eight so there's a good chance we can trigger honest which will give us five percent uh, corruption because uh, she has really high resolve uh, you tend to get traits that you have higher stats of so we can hopefully get more green traits so i'm going to throw her in here just for the builder bonus uh, peasantry income seems like the best option right now we're not really recruiting many people so we're not going to get the max benefit if we got this earlier it would have been better and over here farming is probably the least of our concerns so we're going to go here now ideally we do want to fill up all the roles so even if we have like characters that's not as good so potentially here da, uh, da si or da si, it depends on how the character works 10% commerce not too bad and he has tons of traits and most of them are good minus 5% construction uh, most of them are not related plus three public order but at least a lot of positive stats so a lot of uh, authority to transfer over and such so let's throw him in here I think we might take this before this hmm yeah we'll do this and then I really don't have a clue who should be this I basically went through the list and no one really caught my eye we might just throw a random advisor in here just for another minus 10% corruption uh, but we can do that later uh, the next thing is we need good administrators so Zhang Kai here is one of our best administrators 10% commerce 15% industry I think he is at Jian Ye it's better to look at administrators through this screen here so Jian Ye has nope has Ling Hu Okay, so Ling Hu Xiang Jin has 5% to all plus 15% industry. That fits uh, Jiang Ye, uh, Jian Ye pretty well. But honestly, because it's 15, 5% to all 15, I think, yeah, that's fine. Because we can use Zhang Hai for a slightly more commerce focused one. Um, this one, hmm, honestly, this one has a lot of commerce because it has the port. I kind of want to swap them. Now let's see where Zhang Kai is. Okay, Zhang Kai is being wasted then. Because there's only a little bit of commerce here. We don't need him here. Um, it'd be even better if we put him... Hmm, maybe in Changsha. Or Nanhai. We're thinking about high commerce boost. Actually, Nanhai, I have the perfect candidate for Nanhai. I think we have someone who has commerce and peasantry, and that's kind of what we want here. So... We need to shuffle characters a little bit. I don't think we need him. He didn't meet the cut. I'm going to actually... Oh, we can make vassals? Very interesting. We're not doing that though. Um, I'm going to remove him from office. Yes, you're going to be temporarily sad. It's okay. We need some wiggle room here. And the character I had in mind... Where is he? Yu, Yu Shu Wan. Right her so she's old 54 but she'll she'll make it we get 10 percent peasantry plus four public order 10 percent commerce so that's pretty good and she has high resolve so population growth is good that's what we're going to do here in nanhai oh, now we got to find her here i should have just slapped her in there fighting nanhai is a lot easier than fighting a character we have 59 characters and i doubt we have 59 commanderies mm -hmm. we'll find her He's right here. And then we go back to firing people. So she can stay. He wasn't really on the list either. Neither was he. Wuba Uba is okay. He's just high level. Zhang Kai. Yeah, none of them. They're just characters that served us for a long time. I'm going to make Ma Yuan Yi our Minister Coachman. Minister Coachmen are responsible for raising the horses. And if you think about Ma Yuan Yi's background, this makes perfect sense. You got to conquer your fear. If you're a hippophobe, go raise some horses. Um, 
I'm gonna shuffle them all around. So he's a brewer background. It, it's meaningless. Brewer is a generic one, um, but I think it'd be a perfect fit for Minister of Ceremonies. Eyes and ears, that can be Minister Herald, or actually Justice could also work. Mm, but let's think more spy. Minister Herald is kind of the Secretary of State or the foreign relationship. Basically deals with administrator, uh, the ambassadorship, receiving dignitaries and such. Um, now we're just missing characters. So these have all served us quite a long time. So Uba can actually potentially come here if we just focus on income, but he just didn't pick up enough good trades. He does have 10% commerce, so it's not terrible. What about him? Morale? 5% industry. Is that why we recruited him? 5% industry? Alright, he's leaving. Um, he's level 4. He can just be removed. It's fine. Physician... 5% to all. Okay, I respect that. Okay, he can stay. What commander is he in though? That's gonna matter. That's Wu Ba. Wu Ba is where? Jiangling. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's commerce here, but he could do better. He could move to, um, he can move to Changsha. So we're going to actually move them over here real quick. And just, I, I don't know where, I don't know where he is. He's in Hedong. Okay, Hedong doesn't need an administrator, so we can shift him. He, he's going to stay with us. He's just going to go to a different commandery. Also, Zhang Kai is being wasted here. Zhang Kai could also go to a different commandery. And then we're looking for other uh, characters who could come here and manage one for us. And I have a new character who also has 10% commerce and 15% uh, industry. So for cases like that, commerce industry, we can do... I mean, we can do Changsha, basically. That's what I have in mind. Commerce industry, commerce industry. I think that's it. We need a pure peasantry. Um, we should actually get Yushu one over here. Because this has harbor and a lot of commerce. But Nanha is also really good. We need another one who's good and put them here. Oh, Jade Mine. If we get Chang'an, we don't have Nanyang, do we? Uh, a lot of good commanderies that we don't necessarily have. Oh, Imperial City Nanyang being controlled by the Duchy of Longxi. Okay, we'll try to take that. It's going to be a process to get all everyone uh, sorted. You don't create a court suddenly. Now, there are some characters that are just like advisors who I'm kind of interested in, even though they're kind of low level. As long as they don't have any bad traits here. Right, so... I'm just going to use her for the pure 10% corruption reduction. Uh, that's good enough for me. Um, that's kind of what we need to get our economy booming. And then these positions will wait. Uh, we'll get all the administrator shuffled in next turn because we're kind of swapping them in and out. And after we get that taken care of, we will uh, flush these out with just our high level characters. Okay, so that's kind of our court. Got another good item. I could use some more characters, but we don't have any. We do have a few to level up. A lot of character stuff going on at the beginning of this episode here. Leveled up. Alright, pick up some effortless flow for us. And because we have such um, good faction-wide corruption reduction, in a sense, we can almost call back some of these anti-corruption armies. I think maybe even having one is good enough. Oh, we're still at 11%. Okay, so we still need to find someone else with um, integrity to hand them over. So, like, say she can come out and do that. She's currently as uh, working as a, we call it, assignment character. We don't have one ready? I thought we had a few. There we go. And they get along. Perfect. 
now we have a nice regional city with no corruption. So maximizing our income. 36k a turn. Wow. All that bonus. All that industry bonus. We don't even have the right items. Like that's another thing. Right? He has good items. But now this can go on someone else. We don't have to let him hold on to that. He Yi can as heir. Oh, he has a nice set. I mean, he has more responsibility now. He's the heir. Read your books. Learn how to manage a country. Where is our discourse of the state? There we go. So we're going to ruin the set. It's fine. This is more important. And the reason why we're getting rid of the item is so that we can equip the seal. There we go. That's the proper way to do things. And since we broke the set, we're going to give him a concubine. And that's more satisfaction for everyone. And who else do we make into the leadership role? Bu Si is in there too. So he's going for the discount right now. I'm pretty sure we have a lot of books. There's got to be something that's faction-wide. Uh, we'll find it. Really? All these are administrator? What is knowledge of the heaven? Diviner, 10% experience. We don't have a diviner. Uh, we don't have we actually we don't have that many things that are faction wide. They're all heavily army based. Okay, tough luck. I believe we have a philosopher. Well, we have a couple legalist fanatics. Tycoon's useful. Fifteen percent trade. Heavenly flight increases range damage. Who's running archers? We have one group running archers. Yeah, we, we're not running. Oh, there we go. Liao Hua. Oh, Liao Hua didn't make the cut. That's unfortunate. And we're not going to waste this on him. We don't even have a Jade Archer. Oh, Scholars. Interesting too. Book of Change we do. Oh, okay, so we get 20%. Okay. So Bu Si is gonna get a makeover here too. Oh, no, not Wu Ba, Bu Si right here. So he's gonna go for a scholar. It's nice to have so many uh, ancillary items. Yeah, there we go. So now we get our set. It's not highlighted, but still gonna be active. We get basically twenty percent experience faction wide. This army will also get some benefits. All right, pretty good. And our other one is Liu Liu Gang. I think he's still on the bottom. They don't come to the top. At least not right away. Wait, my mistake. Did I miss him? There we go. Maybe we can get him public order. That's kind of lame, actually. I'd rather get six per uh, six points of satisfaction. Unix. Minus five corruption, but lose minus ten satisfaction. Actually, I can. I think this is a good deal because we have really good satisfaction f just from our communal end. So we don't actually worry that much about losing that little bit of um, satisfaction and getting. Oh, Discord. Uh, that bonus is worthless. Although it is a bonus. Hui has it. No, Hui doesn't have it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Hui took the concubine, so we can't really swap this time. The bonus is actually not worthwhile, so no need to actually force that. Yeah, I think we'll take a concubine. We can even take uh, a eunuch. We can take two eunuchs even. And I guess if we have nothing else to give him, authority is the way to go. At least it gives satisfaction to counteract. And we're going to give him damage. He deserves it. He doesn't have a good armor. He needs to level up. And then we have another uh, Liu, Liu Yingqi. She's... Is she in the army? She might be in the army. Oh, no, no. She's right here. Uh, Liu, Yin, uh, Liu Yingqin, not Qi. She has the right item. Law Enforcer here. Um, but I think... I guess this is authority, so that's actually fine. I think her hair set's okay, actually. 
All right, so our leaders are fine. We we threw in a random leader at the end. Uh, Yu An Shu. He's probably on the bottom. Yeah, she was just there. Get to public order. Extra authority. I don't want to waste a weapon on her. It's not beneficial. Yeah, she just needs to level up a bit. We're just using her as a corruption. Until we get better character, I guess. Alright, let's resume. We can now go back to business. So we want to go wipe out this Kingdom of Liang, or they're no longer called Kingdom of Liang, but that's what they were. Ma Tong, there's nowhere else to run. And He Yi will take care of Ma Chao's remaining forces. They're wiped. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. We also need to start planning for the attack against um, the Duchy of Longxi, or the Liang Rebels. Because one of our brothers already jumped into that war by himself. Eventually we'll see the Lions join, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, a Britain officer. Please come join us. We don't actually have any Britain officers. Like, I looked through all 59 or so, no burn officer. It's so hard to spawn one nowadays. Alright, so they're coming to colonize some empty land. We can definitely afford it now with our economy booming. And with our high, you know, faction-wide corruption reduction, it's not really going to hamper our effort as we expand. Oh, we got two stacks. Ooh. Hold on. Our other stack can just march. Alright, now it's a close victory. I mean, they're just not impressive. They don't have any generals that are... Yeah. They don't even have items for their generals. What have they been doing? I think the only good fights we're going to have remaining is if we fight the Duchy of Long Sea, which we will. I think we're trying to paint the whole map yellow. Another Baron officer. Well, this one's a Han general. And we're also going to probably absorb all our brothers at the end, too. Ooh, that's a good one. But he's going to be in the army. He has his um, Bon Lao Paragons ready. So we're not really going to go for that. I kind of want this. He kind of needs Condemn as well. Yeah, let's get this section here, starting with Condemn. Alright, another peasant rushing down Spice Market. Like the wind, some extra experience for us. Hmm. We want this. These are level 3. Okay, that's respectable. 3 is very useful. I guess we march to the capital now? They're gonna come take the rice patty? Are they gonna resist at all? Alright, he has the right horse. We'll give him a good horse. Good weapon. The front line now. Gonna get us an emperor seat. Hmm. We could technically. There's one item on cooldown, I believe. The uh, this one. One's on cooldown. We can get the turtle formation. All right. We still need to take this. They're trying. Alright, 
Only two more, uh, two turns. All right, so we got armies at our income producers. We drop corruption to zero. Man, this one's Imperial City. Oh, we got to be careful though. We could be sending people who we might want to become administrators. Right. Maybe we'll just wait a turn, just in case. I I know most healers are actually not gonna um not gonna become administrators. They just don't have the right build for it. But I think it's safe to send maybe a couple healers. See, I'm not sure we should upgrade because you get extra commerce percentage, basically, and population, I guess. Ooh, population. Yeah, it's 120% to all. I think this is what's... Yeah, this drives our economy, so I guess we go for it. I take whatever I said back. All right, Hodong's lost its uh, administrator status, so it's not going to stay up here that long. Yeah, also not that important for us now. Yujang's pretty good, to be honest, but we're just going to focus on this copper mine situation. Uh, Downlane's upgraded. Population's not full yet. It's a uh, nice commerce and uh, peasantry, but it's honestly a good food production place. We should really consider downscaling this a little, but since it's already built for us, maybe not. Like, this is a great commander. Like, Tongwan's better income than, like, Hedong or Pingyuan, because you got a harbor and industry, so that's always good. Same logic, the one was really good too. Uh, let's see, these are all done. This one is definitely not done. Weaponsmith, let's get that going. Nanhai is what we're going to focus on. Poyang, Nanhai, that's two administrators. Changsha, three administrator. And I think we have four administrator open. Maybe Cang Wu. Cang Wu just has good potential, but we'll see. It's basically we have to build it from scratch. That's the only. See, we had to build it literally from scratch. Not gonna upgrade the city. Oh, Zhangke. Let's save the 6th one for Zhangke once we take it, because that's a lot of commerce, and commerce is actually really good for yellow turbans. Alright, I think we're fine. We got all the buildings done, we got most of our court set up, armies looking pretty good. Let's just continue. Alright, Zhang Nao clearly got us into the war. Uh, it's asking us for support. Of course we're going to help our brother out. We're, so we're going to throw ourselves into the war against Duchy of Longxi. So we're going to have a lot of exposed positions in the central plains, because they have land here, they have army here, we are not defended here. We don't have we don't have much land close. Our lands are like here. So it means we have to summon new armies. But we did call back an army from the south last turn, or actually two turns ago. So we do have men that are ready to come out. We're gonna accept this. Let's go. And right away, the Dutch Yolong Sea is attacking our fishing port in the north. Alright, we can't defend this. There's no need to try. Uh, we're just going to have to summon armies here. Immediately our brother gets us in trouble. Did they raise it? And Hexi's city is getting attacked. Outrageous. Two armies. I want to fight this. A city defense? We don't get to fight many of these. Just, I wish we had generals. This group, uh, they just don't look healthy, you know? I wanna give it a shot, let's go. Alrighty, I don't know why we're trying this. Um, we're clearly outnumbered. Uh, they do have some interesting generals. So Han Fu obviously has his own faction. He's supposed to be around Beihai area. Uh, Yan Yu, and then I know from reinforcement there's Zhou Shen. Zhou Shen's actually one of the generals that Han sent to destroy the Leon Rebellions, but it seems like he has joined them uh, in this alternative universe. Uh, I feel like we should defend the wall, but the crossbow is giving me second thoughts.
we could just make things difficult for them by restricting entry. Like if we block these three, the fastest way they can enter is either loop through here or loop through here. And we can look for opportunities. Uh, we can't loop them outside. Uh, they, they're going to come in. Because once they take the victory point, we lose. So that's no longer a valid strategy. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best option here. Honestly, the best place to hide against enemy like range fire is like right up to the wall here. Like when you're hugging the wall, it's hard for them to actually hit you. Especially if you hug them like in here. Like there's almost no way. Like they can't hit you here. We could technically hide everyone here. That's like an option. And just engage. Once they try to climb the wall, we go outside and just kill them. They have no siege weapons. Oh, they... Wait, 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 wait. They do have siege weapons, don't they? Oh, okay. It, it's a... It's not a trebuchet. Alright, so we can try this strategy. I, I kind of want to give it a shot. We hide under the gate. Because we have like small unit size, right? These are like half and those are quarter. I, that's pretty... That's pretty well hidden, I would say. Alright, so that's our like bulk of our force that's vulnerable to arrow damage, especially. I'm not sure how good I feel about splitting our force up like into two groups. Consider we're outnumbered heavily. Alright, we can't squeeze these guys in. We need to get it narrower. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, that, that's not looking very good. Those those do a much better job. So maybe I don't lock this one. Oh, but I need to lock this one to make sure the towers never get taken. All right, this way we can prevent the tower from being taken. But then the the thing is like it's hard for them to maneuver. Or maybe we we just hide here and we cut through on this side. These towers can you know do a lot of damage in this zone. This is where we want to fight the enemy. Uh, these hallways are narrow. And they can stay safe. They can fire pretty safe from here. Also into this zone. Alright, this is our dream world. Uh, I'm not going to block that. I'm going to block this instead. I'm going to make it very difficult for them to loop through this side. And just force them into this zone. So this tower can do the most damage. Which means I can probably put my troops back here. And we can all fight here after they die. Yes, these guys are going to die. They're unbreakable, they do tons of damage, but they're gonna die. The enemy cavalry have to dismount to enter the city, I believe. Like, maybe if they take the gate. We don't have cavalry, so I'm gonna do this. And the fire... where's our last stand? Probably here. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright, we're nice and snug. The enemy are coming. They have to climb walls. The cavalry is not coming where the arrows are shooting. Where, where are the cavalry going? Don't give up yet. They're overwhelming us? Yeah, but we got walls. We got like phantom ghosts shooting out of these four towers. I really don't want to lose all of Sihu like right away after we get dragging this war during the end turn. Okay, let's watch it from the attacker's point of view. They're like, who do we shoot at? Where are the enemy? They took the cavalry away. This is really good ch chance for us. Okay, I'm gonna try to move these guys up. Hold on, we gotta wait till the the enemy range units commit to climbing walls. That's what we gotta wait for. Once they commit, we need to come over here. 
This group didn't commit. We can, we can wait. We don't have to charge out. That's probably dumb. We want to fight them when they get on the wall. Don't you dare move. Because these guys didn't 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 climb. Like they didn't climb yet. Okay, let them climb. Let them climb. We block all the entrances over there, so this is the only place they can do stuff. We got towers here. All right, the archers are climbing, climbing. Please climb. Ah, stretch out. Are these, these are spear guards. We don't want to fire spear guards. Can we fire, oh yeah, they climbed up. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, you guys hover in the back real quick. I don't really care what they're doing. They climbed up, but it's fine. Without horses, they're just, you know, troops. All right, engage, engage, engage. We're gonna wait here. Wait, wait, wait. Charge. Open the gate, boys. Open the gate. Let's go. I need to get them all coming out. They're confused because some of the units are inside, some of the units are outside. But if we get them to just come out first. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the generals, actually. And then we're going to block this path here. Uh, something like this. Put these guys right here. These two can fight here. Alright, charge back, charge back. He lost his horse too, because he tried to climb already. Okay, this way we can neutralize the crossbow advantage. They can't really fight us. Uh, we kind of lost the gate, but that's fine. Some of them are fighting inside, some of them are fighting outside, but they're all fighting. Yeah, the generals, they can't charge around, they can't do much against us. And they're confused, like they're trying to go inside, like to the wall, and we're just slaughtering them here. Axes versus shield units, perfect. And now they're c coming down to fight us. Oh, that's our guys. <laughs> we're sliding down their ropes to fight them. Okay. Nice. Alright, they're winning. Can we shoot at... Yeah, let's, can we shoot at them? Maybe we don't shoot at the generals. Ooh, they're trying to fire at us. But we can't do much about that. Can we get them onto them? Get rid of the general? We don't really care about him. They also have shield. Don't worry, we have um, other gates we can... Oh, do we still have other gates? Oh, we have one more gate we can go back in. Alright, there we go. We beat those. Kill these. Oh, they might go for that. Um, that's fine right now. We can't really think about that. I might have to move him back here. These guys are just infantry now. Um, I don't know if I want to shoot generals though. Alright, we just gotta rush back, make sure we are contesting. The generals can't kill our whole batch of uh, store shields. Come help them. Oh, we're getting, we're getting kited. Well, that's not good. 
Uh, that's, that's really not good. That's not our advantage here. Let's hope we can close that gap. Uh, I think they're good. Just going back, that's enough. Shoot that. Maybe charge will be faster. We're on the timer already. I mean, even if we lose, I kind of enjoy charging out of that gate. That was a nice moment. Did we break the gap? No, we're getting we're getting kited like crazy. Oh, they got more archers from behind. That's a shame. Uh, the plan didn't work that well. They spread too far out. We had only so many men. Now these might look scary, but they're all infantry. <laughs> Light it up. Are oh, they trying to prevent us from going there? You can't do that. You got one man. Run, run, run. Alright, we lit it up. Pull it back, pull it back. Don't don't light yourself on fire. Shoot. Come on, I gotta get it up here. Move. Uh, they still. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got cavalry. We got real cavalry. We lost a few. We gotta kill the cavalry. Alright, they're gonna capture the gate back, and yeah, we're gonna run back inside before we get shredded. Open the door! We're friendly! No! Don't shred us! No, no, stay here, stay here at the door. We're up on the... Okay, we're, we're contesting, we're contesting. No, no, don't move, don't move. Don't you move. Oh, that fire is really not friendly. Alright, get, get back, get back, get back. We need to go kill these. Oh, come on, getting shredded. They're climbing walls? We got the gate. Use some logic here. Let's use the gate. Alright, they're done. Go help. I think we lost this. Just They had three times our manpower, but... I like our front gate stand. Is our store shield gonna hold on? Maybe I should have kept them here, because getting captured, it's not good. They were sneaky generals. Like, I feel like if we held this... I mean, 10 second countdown. Maybe we would have got it. But they're getting killed too. Just way too many of them. Good effort, boys. Good effort. Alrighty. We didn't hold, but I like the effort. We only lost one zeal because of how many people we died. Alright, so now we have the brothers all against them. We lost Xihe basically. Got another legalist fanatic. Alright, time to summon some armies. Bledong's also getting sieged by... Okay, so we're gonna have to defend Taiyuan, basically. Whoa. This is a, quite a sight. Okay. Uh, we kept her. It's with him. We're gonna need some real armies. Although, he doesn't have... Yeah, that was a mistake. He doesn't have um, the, the reason... So sorry, we, we spent money for nothing. But we're rich, so we can change... Uh, moment notice. Uh, we don't have the right archer either because we didn't get those reform yet. 
Uh, let's just keep them for now. When we get the Lance Trozen unlocked, we'll pick those up. I uh, guess she, as a healer, that's her job. Front line. And then we're going to summon another army. Mm, I'm going to take her out here. She's an administrator. Um, we built that for her. But we're going to utilize that. Um, I need to find someone who has flaming shot. She's the administrator Nahat. Okay. I mean, we want we want insight. Nahat doesn't need that. Nahat needs peasantry. I think we'll just get public water. Yeah, why not? That's fine. All right. Um, who has flaming shot? One of you must. I mean, even if you don't have it right away, you should be able to learn it. No one. I thought we had a bunch of veterans stashed. That's why I've been going so heavily for um. Scholars. My mistake. Whose army is he in? Alright, fine. We just won't hire, um... Like this army here. The second army. Guess it would just be infantry heavy. We'll summon a good healer. Alright, we ran out of... And then for this... Maybe all cav. Yeah, they're all front line. We, we can all run calves. Okay, we'll, we'll get it to work. We'll hold against these guys. We might lose this. Oh, they're not that strong. They can come try to take it. I don't mind losing it for now. I need armies here too. Oh, Liu Biao. Hmm. We need more deployment. Guo Jia. Guo yellow turban? That's our boy. Okay. Let's ignore that. We have clones. They can, we can have Guo Jia as well. We can't get to him. We're gonna end Ma Teng right here. We have bigger fish to fry. The Leon rebels are just in front of us. Ma Chao, you're now the leader. Yeah, thank us for that. Right, so now we have all of the duchy of uh, Longxi in front of us. We're a little thin, to be honest, right now. Stretched way too thin here. She's going for the armor craftsman. I can't do anything to stop her. We just gotta cut her off behind. Alright, pick up reach. Oh, I don't like these I don't like these buildings. Alright, let's quickly wrap up in the south. We gotta we gotta make a move to the north. Like he's not even worth our time. He's not even defending. He has two territories left, I believe. Three. There's one more on the right. But maybe we can start calling back some guys. We don't need them here. Is he even defending here? Okay, his son's here. Lu Meng? Okay. Interesting. So both of these I think we can pull back. Oh wow, that's far. Now we're on the road. Maybe we can get there faster next turn. 
But both of them can go back. So he can keep that. That retinue is great. I mean, these are level 10 peasants. I, I think we'll just keep, keep everything. We can't afford to resummon them elsewhere. Uh, let's see. These are our angry corp. They're going to continue to collect land for us. Yeah, we can decrease recruitment for this army. Because <laughs> clearly this army is recruiting a lot of men. We'll take our time. We'll grab the tea house, grab the copper mine, and then we're all good. Oh, he did colonize some land, so we do have to move this way. He can move that way while well, he takes this one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be fine. And then we also have this army here. I don't know how, like, we're probably gonna lose a bit more land before things settle down. Alright, let's see. Level 4 and level 3 research. This is just gonna be utility, isn't it? I think we want recruitment. I feel the pain. I need more retinue deployment. Alright, this way we get two more right away. I can go recruit some more generals. This is a long, long-term project. All right, we gotta do. Um, we should have done the administrators first. It would have saved us a little bit of cash in a lot of places, but this is fine too. I don't need this to produce food. Yeah, I'd rather get some utility buildings here. All right, um, I'm gonna throw around a few administrators. So, namely, Taiyuan needs one. Um, who did we pick for this? We picked... Oh, it's, it's all... Okay, it's probably easier here, because we shuffled them out. He's on cooldown this turn. Oh, we summon him back to court. Okay. We are keeping him, because he's 5% to all sources. We're also... I don't think we're using Ma Yi for this. Ma Yi is just here to, for hippophobe training. Zhang Kai is definitely coming back in. He has 10% commerce, 25% industry right here. So I think we're going to throw him in... Hmm... Changsha? Poyang? I think, either, I think Changsha maybe, because he has more commerce sources. It doesn't. It's missing a lot of industries. The twenty-five percent industry is kind of, yeah. So maybe Poyang in that sense. A lot of industry, and we have Camino in. I guess that's the same as Taiyuan though. So there's really no reason why we got rid of him from Taiyuan. Yeah, this backfired. We don't have a port. I mean, Jianye is his ideal place, but we didn't move the girl in Jianye because she's doing a great job. So no reason to move her. Alright, Taiyuan works. Zhangkai is also quite strong. Um, he is 5% to all income sources, which is quite good. Um, mixed income. We don't really have any really big mixed income places, but I think we're just going to throw him in... Jiangling, maybe. Because it's just so developed, we get instant cash. Uh, I feel like Changsha should be someone else. Like, okay, so Nanha, I think we have someone. Changsha right now doesn't make anything, but it will. Oh, uh, I want someone with 10%. I think 
Yu Shu Yu Shu Shan. What's her name? Honestly, he could work, but he's currently on assignment, isn't he? Oh, you're coming back. He's going to be administrator of um, Changsha. We are missing an administrator here in Poyang. Honestly, I just want industry income, 5% industry. That's quite low. I need to find someone who has intuition. That's probably the only requirement. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, I can't see whether they have access to intuition down the line. It's probably only going to be available for mostly scholars, I believe. Oh, he already has it. He already has it. Alright, he's the winner. Okay, so now we should have five administrators. We have four. Because we're waiting for this cooldown, I believe. Right, we're waiting for this cooldown. He's going to go to Zanku. And then we're going to throw the person who we just summoned back into Poyang. And then everything's fine. So I think we're good. Let's continue. Um, we we're supposed to throw people into these positions. But I think... Uh, we can do it real quick. It's not that hard. Garrison replenishment. I think it's maxed out already. No one can take this job because it's only family members and we don't have families. I kind of want to give Liao Hua a job. Plus two public order. Come be the justice. And then once um, he clears out... Wait, he's not going to be an administrator anywhere, so he can stay here. Give him a job, it's fine. Our clone version of He Yi. Alright, replenishment. Kind of his theme. We'll keep a slot open, because it's easier to shuffle people that way. Alright, now we're good. Now let's continue. Alright, so we're our, um, this is the Armorsmith in uh, Chengdu. So we do expect this attack, and... I don't think we have actual towers, which means we probably can't beat this army. Actually... Oh, can I make this work? I don't think it's worth our time, because we do have an army staring down at them, so we're just going to delegate. It's fine. I think maybe with our cab who played it right, use the archers to kill off the spear, we could probably do it. Um, but it's not worth our time. All right, I did forget one thing though. We, oh no, 69, bad year for him. He was gonna become administrator, not anymore. Okay, so we do have a few new characters coming. Maybe they can be a good character. Um, we are at war with the Duchy of Longxi, and it's actually a tough war. Yobao's coming over here. It's coming back for the Jin province. Um, we are going to make a push into Longxi's capital, uh, but maybe we clear some of these land around us first. Ma Chao still need to be killed off. We need to retake this, finish off uh, Donghe's old faction. Finish off Shi Xie, take his Emperor seat at the beginning of the next episode. And just deploy more armies. We just need to deploy a lot more armies in the north. Take back Hexi, start launching attack around this. And we're actually going to paint the map this this campaign. Going to be all yellow turbans. Not just all us, but still, all yellow turbans. So I hope you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!